And this is actually the principle of MEV bot, um, those front runner bots that can take pro profits from trades, for example, like sandwich trading kind of thing. And it's really specific for blockchain. Blockchain transactions, Ethereum transactions are considered valid only when validators include them in a block. It is validators now because Ethereum is now POS. It used to be miners. And miners or validators, they can be bribed. If you, if you, if you initiate your transaction with a higher gas price, then only the transaction with higher gas price will be included, not the one with lower gas price. That's how you can modify your transaction. And for example, if your transaction is not included in the block for a long time, you can accelerate it by putting a higher gas price. But there's a potential attack vector here. If an attacker observed the transaction pool or man pool for transactions, and if he saw a transaction that could um, benefit him somehow, he can, he can copy this transaction and put a higher gas price and have it included in the block before the original transaction. So this contract name is find this hash. We have a hash here, and we're trying to uh, get the string to result in this hash. And we all know like uh, dehash, dehashing something is very difficult and requires a tremendous computing power. For example, uh, when users solve this challenge, he can get 1,000 ether. The attackers don't have the computer power to solve this challenge, for example. But he's smart. He observed the mempool, and then he, uh, he saw the hardworking user who actually solved the challenge to try to include his transaction in the blockchain. And the attacker saw that in the mempool, and he checks if the answer is correct or not. And if he knows the answer is correct, then he can just submit his own transaction with the stream because it's all public. It's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a parameter passing the function. He can submit his own transaction but with higher gas price, and that he will beat the, uh, the hardworking user and get the reward. So uh, the transaction order dependent attacks happen um, because of two factors. First, users, users can increase gas price, and then validators. Validators have the power to reorder transactions. And we have two ways to prevent this type of attack. Uh, we can create a restriction in the contract the gas price cap. This prevents users from increasing gas price and obtaining priority transaction ordering beyond the cap. But it's still not perfect. For example, uh, if we have a, a gas price cap and the hardworking user like, doesn't want his transaction to be stolen, so he put the highest gas, gas cap price. But if the attacker actually is the validator, then the attacker can still include his own transaction before the hardworking user. A better way would be to include, uh, use a commit review pattern whenever possible. This scheme stipulates that users send transactions using hidden information. So the user can hash, for example, or um, encrypt his answer and submit it. And then the contract would decrypt it. This method prevents miners or validators and users to forward looking transactions. So even when the attacker saw this, um, saw this um, transaction in the mempool, he cannot just copy it because he has no means to decrypt. Only the smart contract has the uh, power to authenticate that this user actually signed it with his um, private key, for example, a uh, valid signature. A stream called resolution is passed in to the solve function, right? Yeah. So for anyone observing in the mempool, he can get the plain text version of solution and that he can just submit his own transaction, right? Yeah, yeah. But for example, if uh, in, the, in the second pattern, the command and review, what if the, um, the original hardworking user signed this answer with his private key and submit a signature? And even if attacker submit this same function, he cannot get the reward because the signature was signed by a different entity. But the uh, smart contract can use, for example, functions like EC recovery to, 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 ver to ver uh, verify that it's actually the original user who solved this challenge. Timestamp is not going to work. Timestamp only updated when a new block is included. 
when new when no new block is included, no, no is, is 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 included. There's no timestamp variable. It's only like how much wait time you have. So when you submit the transaction, there's no way to actually use the blockchain timestamp to verify that you actually submitted first. The the person who got the correct answer already submitted first, but it takes time uh, from when he after he submitted and gets included in the block. So attackers you utilize this time block to get his transactions included first. Okay. You can still submit it, yeah. any transactions, uh, uh, like any time you want. Yeah. Uh, the original guy submitted his transaction, but it probably takes like five minutes before <coughs> his transaction will be included in the block. Okay. And within that time frame, the attackers observe this transaction and verify the, an the answer is correct. Yeah. Then, yeah. Yes. 